I'm Tracy Broyles. I'm the director of Spiral Cue Puppet Theater. And I am working from a piece of paper because Spiral Cue is relatively a low-tech organization with high-tech ideas. Um, I'm here today uh, mostly to share with you some theories we have about affirmation, imagination, and practice as important tools in challenging discrimination, oppression, and really facing what can sometimes be a very hostile world. Um, when we were invited to present, I said, oh, I just don't know how we're gonna do this right now. We're in the middle of a million things. And quite frankly, right now for me personally, it's a challenging time to speak to an audience. Um, I feel quite vulnerable as a leader right this moment. Um, the funding world is very difficult. We are working with communities all over the city who are facing tremendous life challenges. And, and to come before you and share uh, some of, just to be in front of you can be a little challenging when you're sort of trying to wrestle all of these things to the ground and make sure you can keep everything floating. So I humbly ask you for your generosity um, as I share with you some of what's going on within our work. So Spiral Q, at the center of our work is a belief that every person has a right to his or her or their story that everyone has a right to tell their story, to share their story, and to be affirmed in who they are and how they are right at this very moment. We're imperfect people, each and every one of us. And with that, we bring a beautiful perfection of effort and grace and struggle and fear and hope and dreams. And for many of the communities with which we work, with whom we work, um, have not felt very safe and affirmed in the world. Whether that is because they come from the queer community or because they're a person of color who has not been supported in our society. Um, whether that is because of socioeconomic factors. I don't need to tell you all of the things. Everyone in this room knows what I'm talking about. And so what we do is we work with communities to support telling stories, whether that's from an activist perspective out in the streets or if that's just in a classroom and supporting one child telling their story of where they come from, who their family is, and being affirmed in that experience because it is not a homogeneous, homo help me, world. Thank you. So um, my crew backstage would, would welcome that moment because central to our work is a bit of call and response, and so thank you for that help. But um, we believe, for example, that arts education is a justice issue. And why is that? Because we believe that every we need to start young, affirming everyone's free expression, creative expression, and really welcoming what each person has to think, say, feel, and bring out into the world. And central to that is, for us, making art. Um, we work in uh, mostly large, massive puppets uh, made out of recycled and reclaimed materials because we believe in working in materials and technologies that are easily accessible to people. So that if we work in any given community, we want, when we're gone, we want to be sure that we have left behind a means for someone to continue to express themselves in that way if they fall in love with it, with or without us still being there. Right? So the idea is that we're in, we're out, and now you can do it on your own, right? Um, so to this place, I say affirmation, the story, essential tool in becoming who we are and putting forward proudly and courageously who we wish to be. Our imagination is another essential tool. We believe that with our imagination, I believe that our imagination is the place where we have a chance to experiment, test, try possibilities that don't seem possible in the world that we're walking in. And so in doing that, we get to explore what it means to challenge power, to imagine a beautiful place, to practice sharing, and I bring it to practice. So we use our imagination to test, right, to test ideas. And whether that's a group of school children saying, we want to test what happens if a bulldozer takes out all these houses, but then we actually make the trees stand up in front of the bulldozer and force the bulldozer out of the way, then they get to test that, right? and they can experiment with it. And whether that's, you know, it 
it goes on and on. I don't need to tell you all the examples. But the point is, is that if we can imagine, once we have a chance and a place to imagine what is possible, and then we get to make it and put it out in the world, now we get to practice it. And when we practice it, we practice lifting something that's really heavy that we can't lift by ourselves. We lift that with other people. We practice um, failing, <laughs> trying something and not getting it quite right, and finding out that the world didn't come to an end. We get to practice some things and say, you know what? That resolution's just not going to really cut it. And so we need to come back and go into another dialogue and say, well, what resolution might? And out of that, what we found at Spiral Q is the number of people who have come in through Spiral Q and found a place for them, not everyone, but for some people, a place of affirmation where they felt safe to express themselves and to explore where they were in that given moment safe enough to imagine possibilities that, that are hopeful possibilities that take quite a bit of risk to imagine, right? Because like, gosh, sometimes we don't want to state what we really hope because our dreams might be crashed, right? So you have a place to imagine that and practice it. And so then with a bunch of other people who may or may not agree with you, but they're, but they're excited about your being passionate or this person being passionate, and they're willing to help you test your idea. And so from there, we practice. Once we do that, people spiral out of spiral queue, literally, and they go out into the world. And the number of people who then say, you know what, I'm going to start a movement, or I'm going to start another organization, or I'm going to go do this or that. And a child who will come back and will say, I made a big puppet all by myself, or someone else who founds another organization in another part of the country who says, is there, who's completely dedicated to challenging discrimination among the LGBTQ community or, you know, what have you. So what we see is, is that this is a place where people test these things and then go out into the world and say, okay, so now I may not use puppets and art and all of these things, right? But they've got this place of where they've, where, um, where a sense of direction and a sense of safety and a sense of community has formed around that individual or that community. And then that cause or idea or what have you can gain some traction and go off and become um, a movement that's really working on a policy level or at a community organizing level or simply in, um, you know, building beautiful things. And so, I mean, that's sort of the, the premise in the work. Today, uh, we, were, we were asked if we would share a performance with you. And Spiral Q, though our name is Puppet Theater, doesn't really have, a, like, a cadre of performances that we can just say, oh, we'll come and perform. So what we've done is, while you all were eating lunch, we created a performance. So what you're about to see is something that is a montage of a lot of material that was created over the past seven or eight years with various communities. Um, so it, it holds within it many communities' concepts and ideas. Um, but I also will say, that it has been completely structured and created in the time that you were eating lunch. And um, that is a lot of times the way we end up working. We will work with a small group, maybe of 20 to 50 people in a neighborhood or a community or a, a coalition of organizations or a school. They will learn basic parts, create basic material and constructs, and then we'll have a big day where maybe 150, 200 people will show up. And in about 10 minutes, they'll be taught the performance by those community leaders who in each section. And then the show will go on. Um, and so as I close up here so we can move into sharing that with you, um, the, the piece there is partly that everyone has a role to play. And so there are people who will, we know, get involved with things from the very beginning. And they'll stick it through the whole time. And so they have this idea, and they begin, and they start, and they, they gather momentum, and they gr attract more people to a movement, and the project will grow. And from that growing, you know, it will, it will start to tentacle and spiral out, and start to attract people who can bring the food, and who can make, play the music, and who can drive the truck, and who can play, you know, buy an ad, or print a t-shirt or put up a poster or any of these things. Um, and so when we get to that last day, suddenly, you know, there's always those people and we need them, right? It's Spiral Q. It's not, oh, well, you can only come the last day. No, that's wonderful, right? Because those people may be doing a lot of very important things in our communities all up until that last moment. 
right? So at any moment that someone enters a process is the right moment for them. And so there you have it. There's that last day. Here we go. 10 minutes and one, two, three, go. That's what happens. So affirmation. We need to create safe spaces for everyone to tell their story and to listen to one another's. It doesn't mean we have to like the story. It doesn't mean we have to agree with the story. But we create a space where everyone can and should and can um, safely tell their story. Imagination. We then imagine other possibilities, the possibilities that we wish we could uh, act out in the world. And then we practice, right? And we practice by making those possibilities real and by literally working hard together to make that performance or parade or festival or rally or protest or what have you actualized in the world. And in that moment when we're walking down the street side by side or when we're carrying some sign or we're speaking words together, play, you know, in chant or things, we find and experience shared, shared physical body memory, if you will. And so we practice with our community doing something together. And we say, wow, we can walk down the street. The number of people who say, I never walked down my street, my street. I never walked down my street. So we want to be, we want to practice being in our communities, bringing our visions into them, and filling them with everything we can imagine um, that really embraces all of our visions.